okay so we have taken this assignment yesterday observe the feeling in the imagination go through all the seven steps of exercise one in yourself which steps are you able to observe clearly within you and which steps do you think you need to make effort on note down your observations we can discuss them so we have completed exercise one we went through steps one to seven in step one, we try to be aware of the imagination as it is, in particular the feeling, without any reaction, any judgment, any evaluation, any effort to change or stop. We just observed it as it is, as a pure observer. Yeah, so the steps are here. So be aware of observe your imagination at this moment, the desire that is feeling, thought, expectation, without any reaction. Step two, we are saying that if the feeling that you have at this moment naturally acceptable to you. So this is something that we verified in step two. Are you in harmony, happy with the feeling that you have at this moment? Then after having verified the feeling, we are asking whether we are happy or comfortable or not with the feeling that I have at this moment. In step four, we are saying who decided the feeling that you have at this moment? Did you decide it for you decide it or someone else or the situation outside decided it? So here we could see that in step four, when I'm able to see that I am the person who is deciding the feeling and I am hundred percent responsible for my feeling. It also implies that I'm hundred percent responsible for my happiness or unhappiness. And if I'm not happy within, then it is my responsibility. Right? So I need to develop myself. Secondly, since I am responsible, so I don't need to complain ab about anyone else for my unhappiness. The other may be responsible for the situation outside, but ultimately I am responsible for the situation inside. It's not the other. So I get free of grudges and complaints in step four. In step five, we ask, on what basis did you decide the feeling you have at this moment? Did you decide it on the basis of understanding or on the basis of an assumption? So what is the basis of the feeling that I have at this moment? Okay, If I'm not happy within and I'm responsible and I can see that it is not acceptable to me naturally, so I have to ask myself on what basis I decided this feeling because of which I get angry, anxious, unhappy, uncomfortable. So whether my feeling is based on right understanding or some assumption which I have not verified. Then Step 6a, we are asking which feelings are naturally acceptable to you? Feeling of relationship or opposition, harmony or disharmony, coexistence or struggle. So now that when I decide that yes, I have to understand and my feeling is not based on right understanding. So what to understand? And how do I make out what is to be understood? So for that, I look into my natural acceptance and try to find out for myself whether it is feeling of relationship or opposition that is acceptable to me naturally. Harmony or disharmony, coexistence or struggle. So I can see with some exploration okay, that it is essentially relationship, harmony and coexistence that is naturally acceptable to me. So I need to ensure it in me. For that, I need to awaken with the activities of contemplation, understanding and realization. Now in step 7a, we are saying that ensure that the feeling that you have at this moment is in line with the feeling we'll be having uh, in a state of harmony and happiness at this moment. Sorry. Ensure that the feeling that you have at this moment is in line with the feeling of relationship, harmony and coexistence and not otherwise. On this basis, you will be in a state of harmony and happiness within now, when you are able to understand relationship, harmony, and coexistence, and coexistence in its completeness, then you will be able to decide your feeling thought accordingly in a natural manner, and you will be always comfortable within. You will always be in a state of harmony and happiness in continuity. So this summarizes all the steps that we went through in exercise one. Now Ganesh is here, so you can share your reflection and question with Sir, and then we can have a discussion. Yes, sir. Yes, namaste. Namaste, sir. Welcome, everybody. 
yesterday we had set of questions namaste namaste sabiko namaste ganesh ji i am having two questions which are related yeah. first one is most of the time i don't remember that i am a consciousness unit so whenever i remember that i am a consciousness unit i tell to myself i am having a self dialogue that i am a consciousness unit like that i tell to myself because i don't see it. similarly while observing my imagination absence of disharmony absence of discomfort can it be treated that i am comfortable because i don't feel the comfortness but i am stable so yeah. these are my question ganesh ji yeah see this is um, interesting you know your first question is very interesting the degree of forgetfulness or the degree of our identification with anything that we are you know told n number of times is so much that if i am told n times that i am the body then i identify myself with the body mm. so much so that i don't even inquire who am i mm mm if i am told n number of times that you are this car mm-hmm. that you get so identified with the car mm. that if something happens to the car you feel something has happened to you mm-hmm. so if the car gets a scratch somewhere mm. you feel that there is a scratch in you <laughs> isn't it mm mm and you sure get so disturbed and you are ready yes. to fight mm right yes and shout and do all kind of things mm mm so you get so much identified with the car that you think that you are the car mm mm you are even willing to fight with the other you know physical fight get your body hurt right <laughs> in the process he if he uses some abusive words this insults you right mm. so you are willing to hurt yourself all this you are willing to do for the car mm so you are not able to see that the scratch is there in the car and not in the body mm. and not in the self mm mm so this capacity of the self to assume something about something else or even about oneself mm is so strong that once it assumes that i am this it gets totally identified with that thing mm. so if it assumes that i am the body it identifies with the body if it assumes that i am the car it identifies with the car if it assumes that i am the sensation then it identifies with the sensation if it assumes that i am not the car the sensation the body mm. right then it starts looking for something else what it is mm, mm. right mm. so if you look at the whole indian tradition there is lot of this you know uh sayings about this that you are not the body and you are not the physical facility and you are not the sensation right mm mm 
So you start looking for something else. And then you are told that you are some Atma or something, right? And mm -hmm. then you start assuming that you are this self, Atma. Mm -hmm. But that assumption itself is not enough. Mm -hmm. Because then you don't know what this Atma is or what this self is. So you have assumed that you are not the body, you are not the physical facility, you are not the car, you are not the sensation, all this, right? But what you mm -hmm. are? Mm -hmm. That you have to explore. But at least this much has happened that you are not identifying yourself with the body, you are not identifying yourself with the physical things, not identifying yourself with the sensation. Now what we are saying here is that let us explore and find out for ourselves as to who am I, mm. right? So we have started this exploration. Am I the physical facility, the car? Am I the body? Am I the sensation? Right. And this we are trying to explore not only by thinking over it or assuming another set of things, but we are trying to see it by direct observation. That is the idea of exercise one and one. Mm -hmm. In exercise one, we are trying to see our self by direct observation. Right? seeing the self by the self and in exercise two then we are trying to see the body by the self and also see our interaction interaction of the self with the body now when you start this process you realize that you have already assumed so many things about yourself And all those assumptions are there sitting in you as your sanskar. Right? And most of the time you go by those assumptions. This is what is happening, isn't it? Ji, ji. So whenever some sanskar is active, which tells you that you are the body or you are the sensation, or you are some physical facility, you get busy with that assumption about yourself. Ji, ji. And you are hardly able to recall that you are not all this. Mm -hmm. True, true. Right? Ji. But whenever you are aware of yourself, whenever you are conscious of yourself, mm. and you are looking at your imagination, mm. At least then you can see that you are not the body, you are not the sensation, you are not that car, right? Yes, can you yes. see that? Yes, G. That I am able to see. Yes. So this is a very important, you know, step. Very important shift. That till now mm -hmm. I was going by n number of assumptions about my own self. Now at least I am able to observe myself in terms of it, its activities directly. Mm. Isn't it? Sure, sure, Bhaiya. So very major shift. But thank then you, what happens you. when you are aware of yourself, when you are, you know, consciously observing your imagination, you are able to see that you are not all these things, right? You are a consciousness yes. activity, you know, and these are the activity of your consciousness. Mm -hmm. But then what happens next moment? Next moment, again, that sanskar, one of the sanskar becomes active. Right? And in that sanskar, mm -hmm. there is some assumption about yourself. Okay? And you get busy with that. Mm -hmm. So some unfavorable sensation comes. Right? And that sanskar... Mm -hmm. 
that you are the sensation that becomes active mm. and you become you get busy with you know getting rid of that sanskar how to avoid that sanskar isn't it mm ji 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 so this is what is happening mm mm so what do we do we have to increase our awareness we have to be now more firm to this decision that i will observe myself directly right mm -hmm. i will be aware of myself every moment and i will be observing myself every moment to start mm -hmm. with i will start observing my imagination and particularly my feeling without any reaction mm -hmm. so all step 1 to 3 you know i will evaluate mm -hmm. this feeling all this i will do then i will evaluate you know check for myself whether this feeling i have at this moment is decided by me or the other then i will also look behind this feeling you know what is my sanskar which is taking mm. the decision regarding this feeling so all these things i will keep doing and i'll keep evaluating the feeling i will keep evaluating this sanskar from the place of pure observer mm. whenever i am able to be at the level of pure observer and do all this i am aware that i am in activity of consciousness right the consciousness mm -hmm. unit with all these activity but the moment i am not aware of myself i am not at the level of pure observer and i come down to the level of sanskar right i go by the assumption which is there in that sanskar mm -hmm. and that forgetfulness comes you think you are something else mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so that will keep happening till you are aware of yourself every moment till you are at the level of pure observer every moment but it is a good journey good exploration it will take time over the year you must have observed that this awareness has increased isn't it ji ji that is for sure ji yes initially there was hardly any awareness most of the time you are lost <laughs> with this sanskar and these assumptions about yourself but ji, now ji. many times you are aware and that awareness is increasing but yes it will take time for lot of the sanskars are there and you have assumed yourself as a body for so many you know lifetimes mm. when we, you were associating yourself with the animal body and then associating yourself with the human body all this time you have been assuming that you are the body mm -hmm. if you look at the animal it has completely assumed itself to be the body mm and through the sensation in the body you can control those animals i mean if you look at elephant for example you know mm. it has such a huge body mm but just by some sensation on the head of the elephant which you create by way of your spear this elephant comes under your control mm. this is possible because it thinks that it is just the body and the sensation mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, Ganesh ji, yeah. I, whether I have to feel that I am a consciousness unit, I don't remember. So that is a thought. But is it that I have to feel that I am a consciousness I to, unit? I have to see. I have to see and understand that I am mm -hmm. a consciousness activity. That is what we are trying to do through exercise one. Mm -hmm. We are able. We are. you know observing our activities of consciousness as a self mm 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 
So when I see this, I can, you know, accept that yes, I am this. Now, if you call that as feeling, yes, you have to feel, you have to see, you have to understand. Mm -hmm. So when mm -hmm. you are observing from the pure observer, you are directly seeing it. When you bring it down to the level of understanding, you are understanding that you are this consciousness activity. When you still come down at the level of contemplation, you can see that as a consciousness activity or a consciousness unit, you have a definite role to play with other consciousness unit as well as the body and the material world. All those things you can see at different levels of your activity. Gee, gee, gee. So normally feeling is at the level of your contemplation. Mm -hmm. But you have to see it directly, you have to understand it, and then you have to feel it. Mm -hmm. gee, gee. Then you can start thinking about it. Okay, okay. Gee. Then decide how to live with mutual fulfillment. That is the expectation. Yes. Did it answer your question? Perfect, perfect, Ji. I got it. And Ji, that uh, second question, Ji, whether absence of disharmony can be concluded as that I am at harmony because I am not feeling that harmony. Yeah, ultimately you must feel that harmony. Okay. Because mm -hmm. when you feel that harmony, that leads to a state of happiness. Mm -hmm. right? If you don't feel that harmony, okay, then it is not leading to the state of leading to the state of happiness. But when you feel that yes, you are at least not un no disharmony in disharmony, mm -hmm. you are mm -hmm. not uncomfortable with it. You are not unhappy with it. But that is not enough. Mm -hmm. It is better. It is better than feeling the disharmony. G -g. But that is, you know, this understanding is so important because not only that I don't feel disharmony, I must understand harmony and I must have that harmony in me and feel that harmony. Mm -hmm. That on, Then only it will lead to a state of happiness. Mm -hmm. And with that state of harmony and happiness, I will feel responsible to fulfill my relationship with others. Isn't it? G G G. Otherwise, I will be in a withdrawal mode. You get this point? Yeah, got it, got it, G. Yeah. So when I see that, yes, I am in harmony with other human beings, then I will participate in my relationship with other human beings. Mm -hmm. If I don't see that harmony, and I'm just seeing that there mm -hmm. is no disharmony, that will not lead to my acceptance of relationship and working for fulfillment of relationship. Okay, okay, Ji. So to begin with, it is better. At least I'm not feeling this harmony. Mm -hmm. But then this is not enough. I have to understand the harmony, feel that harmony. Then only it will become a source of happiness for me. Then only it will become a source of my fulfillment of relationship with others. Okay. Yeah. Gigi. Okay. Thank you, Ganeshri. Thanks Thank a lot. You. Thank you. That's very, very useful to me. Thank you. Thanks a lot. That's it yeah. from my side. Good morning. Uh, sir, uh, as such, there is no question, but then a little bit sharing from there, I may ask a question. Uh, yeah. Can I do that in sharing? Uh, yeah, yeah. Little bit. Uh, like you were telling Gita Devi your participation, and if you can see the harmony, I just want to see that whether I'm able to do that. Uh, last one year, uh, uh, some incidents are there by which uh, 
I could see my participation and then uh, my role. Like my father-in-law got sick first of all last May and then he was admitted to PGI Chandigarh. Then I could see my uh, participation and then responsibility there. And then uh, uh, he passed away. Then also I could see and then so I was in harmony. As you were saying that I'm not able to see that as Gita Didi says that whether I'm in harmony, but then I, I can see that I'm not in disharmony at least. So again, that is the same point which Gita Didi is saying. And then my mother-in-law was very much attached to the father-in-law. And then she got seriously sick. And then uh, even my wife got very reactive. And then we brought her here in Ljubljana. And then we did whatever with body, mind, and money. We could do it. Although we could not uh, save her. And then again, uh, I could see my role and responsibility. And then two of my students, one of my international students, she's uh, sick for very long and she's in the hospital. She was in ICU for very long and then now she has shifted to the ward around two months. And then one of our students even passed away by jumping from the fifth floor. Uh, then also I could see my role and participation and all that. Right now also I'm in the hospital like my first cousin. He has come from Mumbai for some treatment here. And during the night, I'm doing the duty, duty here. So the best part is this, that I'm, this, I'm not, this, I think that it's being done effortlessly because there is no other alternative. When you see the relationship, then it's very clear your participation and all that. And the other part, I could see that it is creating an atmosphere around me uh, means the people who are attached to me, whether in the college or whether in my family. And so all could see because if he's participating, they are also, I don't know, putting, putting pressure on them or they could see relationship at least with me. So they are also now coming forward and doing. For example, if I'm staying here for full, full night, I'm saying I'm volunteering. Then my brother uh, see that, okay, he's do, doing that. So at least he says, I will come in the evening, morning and I will leave you. Although sometimes they ask questions, even in the college, they are, I'm being asked questions, why, why you go there and see the student every time? Now the mother also has come from, uh, from her country. So I don't have answers for that, but then I'm doing it. Uh, so, and then even my children, sometimes they are young. You know, so one is preparing for NEET and the other is preparing for JE. So they also asked me question that why are you doing it now? The cousin has to be brought to home also. So they are a little bit worried how long he will stay and we are preparing for our examination. So we are discussing. My wife is also now. Because of this, I am working on all this. So she also has understanding and then we keep on discussing with my, our children also. So this is what uh, I wanted to share. And I am not... I'm not sure that I'm whether I'm able to see all the seven steps as you were saying, but then you are saying that we have to increase our observation and we have to uh, start observing more and as self. That also I'm doing it, but then this is how I'm able to see my participation. And even at the college level, I'm teaching this course because in PTU, this is in the first semester, many sections are there. Are there. Uh, last year, I could not get the team because all the departments could not find even the core teachers, so they could not spare the teachers. So I took 27 hours load in the week. And now this time, I, I got a team of 20 teachers. So they are already in the online workshop. So I can't say, I will not say I'm excited about that, but I see that, okay, now this is expanding. So I remember one uh, saying of all your mentors that one person can make the difference, whether in the college or in the in the family so this is my sharing sir and and from the beginning i never had many questions i've always been participating but then whatever is being said i'm trying to follow that and i'm doing the experimentation and it is bringing the results as Gita Vivi said before uhv there were so many confusions and the body was also suffering there was always a headache yeah but now it is all harmony and then even my body has become leaner by itself. I've lost around 10 kg weight in the last one year. And people ask me whether you have done it deliberately. I have not done anything deliberately. Earlier I was getting up in the morning. I was running. I was walking just to maintain the body. I'm not doing anything now. I'm participating. 
in the in the household many physical activities even at the college so it is being taken care of automatically sir and i am really looking forward to see you in kanpur also in coming that yes so, yes this is my friend this is a question also i don't have i never had many questions but whenever whatever is being said by the mentors yeah. so i remember that also you said that it's in indians we are skin deep it has not gone that deeper so yeah i think this is what we needed it and we got it now so we are on a journey thank you sir very nice <clears throat> i i will place some observation about your sharing <clears throat> number 1 it is very nice that uh, you know um, you are working on what is whatever is being proposed you, know, you are trying to explore into it and whatever you find you know, works in the process of exploring you are trying to work with it so that is very nice and you have been doing it for last few years i um, can see this you know you have been there in the morning session i think since 2021 right or 22 yes uh, 21 april april 27th april 2021 i have never missed any session yeah 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 so this is very nice um, that you are so consistently working on yourself and also in your relationship so this is very good you know <clears throat> second observation is that uh, <clears throat> when you are working with uh, in your relationship uh, many times your focus seems to be on the body part uh, so what we need to do is that we have to take care of the body of the other as well as the self of the other so that responsibility towards the body as well as the responsibility towards the self should become a part of the program for the fulfillment of my relationship so all these questions coming from different people you know why you are doing it are very natural questions so they are able to see that what you are doing is good you know you are behaving properly with other people you are feeling that sense of relationship and you are also you know spending time and effort and resources for the well being of the other and they are feeling motivated about it and they also want to participate so all these are very good you know achievements but then they are asking question which is also natural so not only they want to appreciate but they also want to understand they also want to understand the relationship what it is how we can understand it so that part i think you know uh, should also come uh, to the center of your concern for the other concern for the relationship if it is already there you think then it is fine but in case that is not the integral part of your fulfillment of relationship all the time then probably it has to be brought in and it has to be brought in to the central position because unless we take care of the self of the other it will not have a long term effect so it will have short term effects you know i will feel satisfied people will also appreciate it but then if that self is not taken care of then after some time it will get back to the same problem with the body and this multiplication also will not take place so when you are interacting with the students and taking the class yes certainly you are taking care of the self of the students and paying Uh, attention to their well-being or their you know understanding which is already there but even in the relationship thing i think i have to keep in mind that fulfillment of relationship has to do with the fulfillment of the self as well as the fulfillment with the body so if we keep that in mind probably there will be some uh, 
change in our uh, behavior and work. Yeah, that is my observation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That has to be means, okay. Uh, I have to see that you're right that uh, sometimes, uh, like yesterday, that okay, you are trying to do so many things for the other people, but then see while he was living. But then yeah. I can see the scars of ours. Even I, even if UHV would not have been there, this journey would not have been there. Even I would have been confused what to do. Then it would have made me. Lot of disharmony, but then we were, would have been using our sanskars. So I can see at least the sanskars of this. But then you're right that, that I have to see others more as self, even daily life, and participate yeah. in that also. And yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Good. Nice. Good morning to everyone. Uh, good morning, sir. So uh, during the uh, step one, observing the self. Uh, for the past, uh, uh, from February, I have been uh, participating uh, yeah. in the exercise one. Uh, I just have a doubt, uh, uh, which I would like to get a clarification. Yes. In the step one, we observe the self uh, without uh, uh, reacting to it or without um, uh, uh, disturbing the uh, process of it, and then identifying the feeling. Then we go for the uh, other uh, steps like uh, whether the feeling is uh, uh, giving us harmony or not and uh, whether it is a cause of us. So in the step one, we try to observe the uh, whole process of imagination. And then uh, uh, you see the step two, three, four, six, seven has to be started after completing the complete imagination or during the process of the whole uh, imagination cycle. So, for example, I have an opposition with my uh, colleague uh, or with a student or with any family member or with the, uh, 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 any societal person. So, I go for the observation. Uh, I try to identify the feeling and the whole process of imagination has to be completed. Then I have to go for the process of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 or intermittently during the process of imagination itself, the whole thing has to be done. So. Can, can you just repeat the question, please? Uh, yes, where, sir. Where are you uh, from? This is your native place? That's not sir, I am here. from Chennai, Chennai, sir. Chennai, Chennai. Okay, yes. Yeah. S sir, uh, while doing the observation, yes, we try to go for the uh, uh, identifying the feeling. Yes. And without disturbing the whole process of the imagination. Yes. So we we uh, we are not intermittently stopping all those things. Uh, we try to observe the completeness of the uh, whole uh, process of the thought process, and then uh, how do we uh, behave to it? Yes. Then we have to go for the step two, step three, step four, step six, and then seven. Or during the starting of the feeling itself, we have to uh, start going for the two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Yeah. So when I'm observing my imagination at this moment let's say t is equal to one right yes sir then i see my feeling okay, in that imagination and then i start evaluating that feeling okay so step two and step three i'm trying to find out whether this feeling i have in this moment is naturally acceptable to me or not naturally acceptable to me does it lead to harmony and happiness or it leads to disharmony and unhappiness now when i'm doing this then some imagination will you know take place in between so i'm not following that i'm working with the feeling that i had observed at this moment, t is equal to 1. So in the meantime, if some imagination takes place, let it go. You are not engaging with it. Okay. So what uh, I'm able to do is that 
I am able to handle this feeling which has to test at time t is equal to 1. Right? So step 2 and step 3, I will do it this way. Now, what is the outcome of it? The outcome of it is that if I have a right feeling and I observe it and I evaluate it and I find that, yes, it is natural and it is leading to harmony and happiness, then I will decide to continue with that feeling. On the other hand, if this feeling was not natural and it was leading to disharmony and uncomfortableness and unhappiness, then I will not continue with this feeling. Isn't it? In the meantime, some imagination would have taken place, which I am not able to observe. So what we have decided is that, okay, fine. Something has happened in between, let it happen. But at least I am able to handle the feeling that took place at the moment t is equal to 1. Right? So that is one part. And this is the major part. Then, next thing that I will ask about this feeling in step four is that this feeling was decided by me or by somebody else. The things outside or some other person. So all that will go on. Then I will ask, you know, whether it is based, you know, what is the basis of taking this decision? You know, the assumption which is based on right understanding or not based on right understanding, all those questions. And then automatically six, at least six A and seven A, all this will take place. So at moment T is equal to one, I observed the imagination and the feeling and I am working on it from step one to step seven. In the, sum, in the meantime, some imaginations will pass away, unobserved. Let it go. But slowly you will see that as your awareness increases, the time taken for you to go from step one to step seven will go on reducing. it will go on reducing. And you will be able to see that many times all these are very spontaneous. Right at that moment of time, you are able to do all this. But till that happens, fine, you know. Take one sample at time t is equal to one, work with it, up to step seven, then come back at time t is equal to two again, see it, observe it, evaluate it, and do all that, those things. So at least at those moments, you are able to see and observe and evaluate and purify your feelings and your sanskar. In the meantime, some imaginations may slip and you may not be able to see them, which is fine. Which is fine. Slowly our speed will increase and we will be able to do this spontaneously. But to begin with, it is fine. Yeah. Does it answer your question? Uh, sir, a uh, uh, little bit, uh, I need much more clarity, sir. Uh, shall I give an example and then uh, go for my yeah. question, sir? Okay. Uh, for example, I have an opposition with my uh, family member. 
uh, for some expectation. Uh, uh, I just have an observation. Uh, sorry, uh, I have an opposition. So uh, during the process of contemplation, I was completely observing the whole process of how the feeling starts. Then after the feeling uh, is starting over, I go for the thought expectation. Do I have to completely run the observation with the, the feeling, thought, expectation, or I have to stop with the feeling itself and try to understand whether it is harmony or not, then whether it is created by me, then we have to go for the step seven, or I have to go for completing the whole picture of thought, expectation, and how to... Uh, uh, then I have to do the process of two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven. Yeah. So our interest is with the feeling. The feeling has to be looked at, evaluated, and set right. Okay. Sir. If that happens, then thought and expectations will all, you know, get set right. The behavior will all get, you know, in order. So our interest is feeling has to be set right. And then our interest is that the sanskar behind this feeling also has to be seen and set right. Yeah, actually, I want to clarify from you uh, that whenever we are in the step two, we have to understand whether our feeling is naturally acceptable or not, whether we are <coughs> comfortable with the it uh, with it or uncomfortable again in step number six whenever we move then we find that that it uh, we have to assure that our feeling is naturally acceptable or not in six, six and seven most I mean, it is much more related uh, with each other so uh, i i want to clarify that what is naturally acceptable to me uh, it has to be naturally acceptable to everybody or not because we are all similar to each other. That is, it has to be universal or not. Or it is like that, that everybody's life journey is different. So what is naturally acceptable for me is not like that. It has to be naturally acceptable to the other. So I want to clarify at this point, Aya. Yeah. The answer is very simple, which you must have got by now anyway. The answer is that for us, each one of us, the feeling that is naturally acceptable, they are the same feelings, right? Mm -hmm. For example, the feeling of trust, feeling of respect, feeling of love, right? Affection. All these are naturally acceptable to each one of us. Mm -hmm. But then the difference may be that I am not aware of it. Mm -hmm. You are not aware of it. The other person is not aware of it. And out of his past experience and past association, hmm. he has accumulated, he or she has accumulated some sanskar, which keeps saying that, okay, you have to trust everyone, but then, you know, people cheat, so you don't trust. Hmm. Now, this is out of his interaction and experience and, you know, out of his sanskar. That... When you ask him what is naturally acceptable to you, feeling of trust or distrust, hmm. he will say, trust. You know, after all, feeling of trust is naturally acceptable, but when then you can't trust people, you know, people cheat mm -hmm. you and all those things will happen. Yes. No, he will say hundred things. But the core idea is that his natural acceptance is for the feeling of trust. But his experience and his sanskar, you know, his assumptions, they tell him that don't trust okay, because mm -hmm. this trusting may be a very costly affair for you. Mm -hmm. Now, when he does not have a feeling of trust or he has a feeling of mistrust, he feels unhappy. Mm -hmm. right? So that unhappiness is there. But mm -hmm. then he does not know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. That was the situation with most of us, right, to begin with. Mm. But now as we are working on this exercise, slowly we are able to improve upon our feelings, right, mm. upon our sanskar. And now we are able to have better feeling and therefore, you know, 
more state of harmony and happiness within. Mm. Yeah. And we are not getting cheated also. Mm. <clears throat> yes, <I> am. <clears throat> now whenever we are uh, telling about the assumptions or the sanskar, so I have also, there is a doubt because there are some sanskar uh, which are deep rooted in us, which are actually good in our, in our life journey. Uh, those sanskar make our life a bit smoother. So, so in that respect, uh, sir, Bhaya, what is your saying? That means assumptions are not always bad. No, some assumptions too are good also. Yeah, yeah. In fact, <clears throat> we are not saying that you should not have assumption or you should not have sanskar. We are mm. only saying that we must have the right sanskar. Yes. The assumption which are based on right understanding, sanskar which are based on right understanding. Mm -hmm. right. So when we understand, when we explore and understand reality, mm -hmm. then we'll have the right kind of sanskar. Yes, yeah. And so in, we must have those sanskars. Yes, Bhaya. and in step number four, again, we have that uh, our feelings, for our feelings, we are responsible. No other outside world is responsible. So in that case, sometimes there is this harmony um, because, uh, because now we are doing this UHV and uh, one, we all know what is universally true, what is not true. But whenever we are interacting always with this professional life, personal life, we see many things each and every point. So it is not each and every time it is it is a feeling that we are we are not in a state of harmony. Means it is dependent again on the outside environment. Though we do I want to do the exercise step by step, but at that point, I have always a question that how, how I will get the harmony when these, these people are doing these things and all, which is also affecting me. Yeah, these are things affecting me. Their behavior is affecting me because I have some sanskar, which tells me that they, these people must behave this way. And when they are not behaving that way, then I am feeling unhappy. Mm -hmm. I have some feeling of opposition for them. Mm -hmm. Now, if I understand that people will have the feeling or their behavior on the basis of their sanskar, not on the basis of my expectation. Mm -hmm. So if somebody is behaving in a different manner than my expectation, Hmm. then I will be able to see that he has a different sanskar, hmm. which is giving rise to a different feeling. Hmm. So rather than getting unhappy about this, I will try to find out the way to work on his sanskar. Hmm. Rather than developing the complaint or feeling of opposition for him or her. Hmm. So what is happening is that I'm developing a feeling of opposition when the other person is not up to my expectation. Mm. But the problem there are two things. One is that he does not have the right feeling. That is one problem. Mm -hmm. The other problem is that I have the expectation that he should have the right feeling without making sure that he has the right sanskar. Mm. And that will not happen. Right. So I have the expectation which is not right. And that is the region of my getting <coughs> disturbed. Yes. Yes, yes. Bhaya, so this is a very, um, my fear about feeling about this UHV is that now I become aware about my feelings. That means... Mm -hmm. Not each and every moment, but after, say, one hour, I recollect that what I was thinking, this is right or not. So I'm going through the steps. So this is very positive for me, Haya. Yes. Yes. But now, slowly, I have to become aware of myself every moment. <laughs> yes. 
Yes. <laughs> so, because yes. then we will realize that, you know, every moment I have to be happy. And in order to be happy every moment, I have to have the right feeling every moment. Mm -hmm. And right sanskar every moment. Certain changes also I have seen in myself that I told uh, Kumar Vaya that I carry something always to home. That means if something happened in college, so I carry that thing. And But now this is somehow um, gun. Means um, I, I can, I, when I am going through this exercise, then I'm feeling good. Yes. So this is also good, good sign. Yes, certainly. Thank you. Thank you so much, Faya. <laughs>